Hi, it's Adam from GIF Music and today I am joined by Jamie Fisher from Alesis. And as stages are getting quieter with more guitar modelers being used, electronic drum kits are next. And today we're going to take the Alesis Strata Prime and show you how to get the best out of your electric kit for live use. Yeah, sorry, two, two seconds, fellas. Do you mind if I get a bit more bass in the in ears and a bit more kick as well? I know that's on its own channel and a smidge of hi hat. Just a little bit more. Yeah, sound, thank you. Go again. So as you just saw in that intro clip, it sounds wicked, but I had to make some in-ear adjustments and you know, the Strata Prime sounds incredible. We know it sounds incredible, but you can't get the best performance if you're not hearing yourself. And Jamie, you are a professional, you tour, you do session work. So an in-ear mix is incredibly important for you. So how do you like to run your in-ear mixes? Well, it's, as you say, it's ex extremely important. The most important thing is that you've got the ability to be able to separate out parts. So yeah. you need to be able to say, I want more hi-hat, I want more vocals maybe, maybe a bit more bass drum, maybe a, a bit less tom-toms. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got different needs. And when you've got a band, uh, increasingly on in-ears now, where you've got silent stages, everyone's on in-ears, you need to have the ability to give everybody the mix that they need so they're comfortable and they can relax and deliver their performance. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, we've seen it live where people have direct outs on you know we've got a headrush prime here it's got direct out xlrs same with bass di's same with keyboards and with electronic drum kits you know a lot of electronic drum kits just have a left right out yeah but something more powerful such as a strata prime you have a multitude of different line outs <laughs> exactly which right. you know is great and you've got that control hmm. so today we have the strata prime set up to utilize all of the outs jamie yeah. How do we have it set up? Yep, absolutely. So Strata Prime has got two main outputs left and right, and that's how it's set up when you buy it and you set it up. And for many applications, that will be absolutely brilliant. However, uh, what we've found today is that, and what, what you find on stages generally, is that you need more than that. You need the ability to be able to uh, adjust things separately uh, for different reasons. You might be making a recording, you might be at a gig, you might be managing in-ear mixes. All of these different uh, applications require, to some degree, the ability to separate out the parts. So Strata Prime has got the main left and right outputs, and it's also got four assignable outputs, which is crucial. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can freely assign different parts or stereo pairs to any of those outputs. So what we've got today and what I'm demonstrating is just one way of doing it. There are lots of different ways of doing it, uh, but this, this is just one application which I think works very well in a live environment. First of all, if you're doing a gig, if you're live, you may not need stereo. A lot of front of house mixes are mono anyway, so you don't need to think about stereo pairs in the same way. It's not this, the case with every gig, but no. it's very common. So that's what we've done today. That's, that's the route we've decided to take. And I'll explain what it is I've done. So we have got our kit here. Um, I've made a special live mix of the kit. So all these edits are done on a per kit basis, which means you can have lots of different kits with lots of different output configurations, as many as you like, save as many as you want on the module and just name them whatever you want. So you can have different configurations for, from one day to the next without having to make any changes once you've set them all up. We have got here um, our kit pieces. Now what I've done is I've taken the ambient mics down for some of the kit pieces. I've left the ambient mics up on the cymbals because they're actually being sent as a stereo pair, which is quite nice. So what I've got is I've taken the ambient mics down on the bass drum, the snare drum, and the tom-toms, and the hi-hat. The reason for that is that those are the separate parts, and then we're keeping a, a stereo mix of the cymbals. So you do the, you change the, the ambient uh, microphone sends on the kit edit page, which is where we are now. So once I've taken those down, you can see they're down to zero there. They're still up on the cymbals but on the, on the drums, they're down to zero. We then go to our mixer page. And here I'll show you where I've sent each kit part. So on the bass drum and the snare drum are still going in the main drums mix. There they are. And each of those is hard panned left and right. So you just get the dry bass drum with no ambient channels on the left channel, 
you just get the dry snare drum on the right. Very important if you're doing a gig as well, because you turn up to a, a venue and the engineer has got channels for all the kit pieces. Oh, he yeah, always absolutely. puts the bass drum through that channel. Yep. He's got his, his treatments. This is how they treat a real drum kit. And actually, when you've got something as powerful as Strata Prime, you can give the, the engineer the same opportunity to, to make his edits and to put any treatments that he puts yeah. on as well. So that's, that's another reason why absolutely. taking the ambient room mics down is a good idea here. You just want that dry, direct mic channel. So that's what we've done. And another really good thing about this is kick and snare are only taking up two channels in That's this right, situation. Exactly, yeah. Whereas sometimes a kick alone could take three. You know, you've got all the versatility in here and it's only taking up two channels. Yep, that's right. So just one. I mean, we've got, uh, if you tap there, you've got inside and outside kick mic channels. All the bass drums are like that. So you do still have two mic channels here, but they're yeah, being... So it's almost like its own bus. Yeah, totally yeah. is, yeah. But, it, but we're sending it just down one channel. So kick and snare, hard panned left and right, two separate channels. Yep. And what we've now got is all the tom-toms have been hard panned. So all the tom-toms are panned left. Remember, we're dealing with the front of the house mix here. So we don't need to worry about stereo representation. All the toms are going through on the left channel of pair of five and six. So that means that they're all going out of number five. So all the toms have got their own channel. Yep. Um, we've also got, if I tap here and then there, we've got the hi-hat on the same, uh, on channel six actually, and panned all the way to the right. So the hi-hat's got its own channel. I find that really important because very. again, when we're talking about monitor mixes, it's very common for some members of the band to need to hear a bit more hi-hat than others. Very, 100%. and the hi-hat, it's really important. It glues everybody together. So yeah. being able to control that individually, is very, very important. So we've got the hi-hat going through its own channel as well. And then that, and that leaves the cymbals. So what I've done with this particular setup is the cymbals are all assigned through three and four. So they are a stereo pair of cymbals and the ride symbol as well is in there. And I've also left up the ambient mix channel, which is the overheads and the room mics. Mm -hmm. I've left those and I've assigned those to three and four as well. So we've still got the room uh, ambient mics mm -hmm. on the cymbals, which gives them a nice sense of air and space, but all the drums and the hi-hat, we're just using the direct mics yep. and they're all separated out. Now yep. remember, this is just a suggestion. You can, you can do things differently if you want to. For it, another example would be, you're just using the whole kit left and right stereo, leaving the ambient mixes up, but you then send the snare drum to three and the bass drum to four, mm -hmm. just using four channels. Yeah. That's a basic uh, but very powerful live environment setup where again, the engineer gets to treat the kick and snare separately, but the whole rest of the kit is left in stereo, which is quite mm -hmm. nice. Or alternatively, you could uh, have uh, kick and snare in one channel, stereo toms in another pair, and then stereo cymbals in another. Mm -hmm. And that would give you stereo representation of everything. Uh, but then you can uh, put that into a DAW for recording. So yeah. remember, you can just, you can freely assign things to different outputs and it gives you the power to use this kit in live and studio environments. Yeah, and I think a really important thing here is the fact that we've got all of that across just six channels. Yeah. And sometimes you turn up at a venue, and I know I've turned up at pl <laughs> plentiful venues, great venues, by the way. Ooh. They need more funding. Um, <laughs> but it's you'll turn up, and there'll be two or three channels on this 32-channel desk or 24-channel desk that are not working. Yeah. And you're rocking up with this, and immediately, instead of micing up four yeah. toms, it's just gone straight into two channels. Oh, yeah. Or one channel, if you, as you say, doing the mono. Um, you know, hi-hat for me when I'm doing work where I've got to have in-ears, that's my click because I don't yeah. necessarily enjoy having a click. I like a little bit of groove, mm. but that's that. So the importance of that is, you know, it's massive. It totally well, is. Not only an in-ear, but, you know, when you're sending this out. Yep. So when this is going to your front of house, you can mix down everything properly and it'll just sound massive. And, you know, the wealth of sounds that are in the Strata Prime, you can really, really get the most out of this. Um, and you can, as you say, you know, we can get this kind of stuff slightly uh, differently on others. Um, but in terms of versatility hmm. and ins and outs, like interface, I mean, the Strata Prime is is the market leader in this kind of thing. It, it totally is. And if you want to use this kit professionally on a stage, you do need to have that kind of uh, flexibility to yeah. make your own in-ear mixes so everyone can have their own mix, to give the front of house engineer the opportunity to use his his channels and to, to separate out and mix the part from the front of house. Yeah. And also if you want to track this into a DAW, again, using yeah. the individual outputs. So uh, you need that kind of power to use it professionally. Yeah. Um, or indeed, you can just stick to left and right <laughs> and do all the mixing on the module. If yeah. you, if 
people don't need separate different mixes, then you can do a great deal just on the module there as well mm -hmm. and just use a, st a stereo output. So the, the, you get the flexibility to route things freely as yeah. you need to. Yeah, and I think another really cool thing with you know the Strata Prime in this case um, is the fact that you mentioned if you're tracking. Hmm. Now I know a lot of bands nowadays will take a direct, you know, a stereo left, right, or they'll take a multi-track from the desk. Hmm. What you've done there, because another really great and obvious thing is that there's no microphones, you've got no mic bleed, you know, you've not got anything like that. And in an age where people like to edit quite a lot, you've got so much control hmm. over that stem. Hmm. You know, if you've missed something out there or you've kind of, <laughs> you've had a beer, you're a little bit off it, and you just kind of need to quantize a bit, you can do that because you've got all that individuality with the stems. Hmm, absolutely. So uh, you need to have something with multiple outputs to be able to use it professionally mm -hmm. and Strata Prime delivers. It absolutely delivers. Not only on the fact that you've got all that versatility, but uh, it sounds great. And another thing, it looks like a kit. It does. It plays like the, <laughs> really, yeah, it looks, it plays the 360 symbols and all that. But, you know, this is just kind of touching on how to use a kit in a live experience. And now there'll have been some jamming interjected and kind of like dropped in throughout this video, but it was super simple. Mm. We had an entire in-ear mix. Uh, Rick I was going direct, I was going direct. And, you know, I mean, I wish I had that when I was like 15 uh, again, yeah. <laughs> getting the neighbors kicking off about having a full acoustic kit. Well, absolutely. Being able to turn up to a venue, you don't have to mic anything, you set the yeah. drums up, you go in, increasingly bands, even at the sort of mid-range level, bands are using digital desks, everything's been remembered and stored as a snapshot oh, gotcha. from last time. Bang, you can be set up and rocking the house in like 40 minutes, you know, oh, yeah. with, all, with, with incredible consistency and extraordinary sound quality. So these are, you're finding, I'm finding electronic drums far more prevalent in a live environment they're just mm. they're just so um so so uh, uh versatile and so quick to set up and just they're just fantastic so as we say jobs are good and if you would like to find out more information on the elysia strata prime feel free to visit gearformusic.com and we have more videos more sound demos on the strata prime they're all on the youtube channel as well don't forget to go and check it out make sure you like and subscribe jamie thank you so much for coming Thanks, and Sarah. uh the jam will see you out. Take care.